you to another video of AWS tutorials. We will do in this uh, video a challenge lab, which is creating a static website for the cafe. Now, if you recall the cafe scenario, there is a Frank and Martha, they just set up a cafe. And in this particular lab, we are going to use our skills to make a static website for the cafe and host it in Amazon S3. Then we will do implement a method to protect our data using a lifecycle policy and data replication and also with one of the features of S3, which is S3 version. Then we want to implement a disaster recovery strategy in Amazon S3. And basically at the end of the lab, we will have the cafe website similar to this page here. And we have the main S3 bucket, which is going to be hosted in the first region and a second S3 bucket, which is going to be hosted as a replication in another region. The first step is going to start the lab. I have already started my lab, so feel free to start the lab by now. And in the task one, we want to download this zip file to our computer. And once I open it, it's going to contain a static website, which uh, has an index.html with a CSS file and with images for the cafe. First thing first is to access the AWS uh, console. And here it's just complaining that I have another user in currently accessing AWS. So just let me make them two tabs so I could easily navigate to between them. You could also put them side by side if you like. So the first thing is going to be SC3. And in the first task, we are going to create an SC3 bucket and enable and clear uh, look all public access or enabling uh, public access. And then we want to enable the static website. So I'm going to do that just now. I'm calling my bucket a website. And let me call it based on the date of today. And I will add main. And I will explain why I call this main later on when we do the data replication, allow public access, and then I will create the bucket. There is acknowledge for public access create a bucket then we want to go to the bucket itself go to the properties go back to the steps and we want to have a static website hosting enabled so we go all the way down edit and enable in the main index it's going to be called index.html how i know that because the s3 has index.html. So I'm going to copy this uh, name of the file here. And then I will save the changes. We want to upload the content of the S3 to uh, the bucket. So we are going to upload. So you can uh, add files or you drag and drop your files here. Uh, let me try this, which is much easier. I will drag and drop them here and then upload. Now this should upload the two folders I have and the index.html file that I do have. While this finish uploading, let's go back and it now asking us to answer the first question in the multiple choice. To access them, you need to go to the details, show, and from the show, you will have an access to the multiple choice question. And the question now is when you in the website after task three, do you see the page in the browser? How we can verify? Go back to your bucket, finish uploading. Now go to the properties. And this is our website URL. Open it, you can see 403 error. So the answer to this is going to be no and submit go back again to my task and we want now to create a bucket policy now this is sounds complicated because we want to allow people to access our main website in this bucket so we have to go to read about this in the AWS documentation let me open in this in a new tab and one of the things you want to do is to grant read only permission to any user and this is an example 
of that bucket policy that we can use. If you read the lab instruction, it's asking you as well to do just that. Grant read only permission to public anonymous users. And this is what we are going to do. We will go back to our AWS console and from the AWS console properties, and you have in the properties a tab for permission. We want to edit public policy. So we are going to do edit. And this re, um, basically, guys, is a resource-based policy or what sometimes you, we call it inline policy. We want to uh, paste the policy that we copy from the documentation and we change the ARN, which is the Amazon resource identifier with our example bucket. You could change the date if you want for the version and then we can save the changes. All good. Now go back to your website for the packet URL, refresh, you will be able to see the, the website is functional and active for the cafe. The other challenge is to protect the website data and protecting the website data is going to be happened by enabling versioning. And when you enable versioning in your bucket, this makes sure any old version will be kept and we can use lifecycle policy to, co to copy it to another tier or another class of S3, or we can also replicate it to our backup S3 bucket. So in this task, we are going to enable versioning. So let me go to the console again, and from the properties, this is how you enable versioning. You do, do bucket versioning, enable, and then save changes. Now, the next thing, they want us to open the content of the website. I'm going to use Visual Studio here. And we will add and update a few uh, files here. So we are going to update the first thing we need to update is the background color in the index.html file. So we can use Notepad, you can use uh, any text editor for that. So we are going to change the color from aqua marine to uh, gain borrow and so on from orange and so on. You can easily find this uh, color, which is here. I'm going to change it to this lovely one. And the orange here, it's going to be changed with this color. I'm just copying and pasting them because just to save time. And the last thing we are going to change is this color in this tab, which basically are going to change the color that we have here in this table in those rows. Go back to Visual Studio and save the file. Then if you go back to the instruction, they are going to ask us to upload the index.html file to our S3 bucket again. So let me go to my AWS console to objects and then upload, add a file, add index.html and open. Then upload. The file is successfully uploaded. I just enabled versioning so you can see now this is the existing the first version of the file and this is the second one which I just upload now if I refresh the page I should be able to see the difference in the color now if you want you can answer question number two go back to the multiple choice URL and if you notice what is another way to ensure maximum protection and prevent accidental deletion of a preserved version? It is going to be via multi-factor authentication. How we know that? Go back to the console, go back to the properties, and you can see multi-factor authentication for deletion protection. So you can enable it here from the properties of the bucket. Submit this one, and let's go back to the um, the lab. The third challenge is to set up a life cycle policy using two rules. The first rule, we want to move a previous version of all source packet to S3 standard in a frequent after 30 days. So to do so, let's do them 
one at a time we go to the management we have a life cycle rules we create a life cycle rule and we call it first rule now i want to apply this to all objects in the bucket i'm not going to move the current version i'm going to move the non-current version to standard any frequent access after 30 days and then create that rule go back to the instruction in the second one we want to delete all the previous rules um, uh, sorry all delete, delete previous version of the object after 365 days so we're going to create another one and we call it second rule apply and this is going to be delete expired object uh, permanently delete a non-current version of the object after 365 days and then create a rule so we have now two life cycle rules the first one is going to move the previous version of any file to standard infrequent access after 30 days and the second one to delete any previous version of any file permanently will be deleted after 365 days you could confirm that you have this is what exactly you did in your asset uh, bucket lifecycle policy by reading this uh, paragraph here you can also now read about the will architecture framework and one of the things we want to achieve in any architecture is basically to achieve high level of durability how we can do that to achieve the maximum level of disaster recovery just in case if our first bucket in our first region deleted accidentally damaged crashed we can have a copy of our website in a second one to complete task seven successfully we need to go back to our bucket as c3 and now we need to create a new bucket i'm going to call this uh, website replication the date of today dash 2021 t1 and i'm going to create this one in the irish region i want to enable versioning bare instruction if you go here they are saying we need to create a new bucket and we need to enable versioning in it and then we need to create a replication for that bucket so we create it now go back to asset 3 select the original main bucket that you have and then from the management create a replication rule in the replication rule we need to enter a rule name so this is replication rule by default is going to be enabled now this is our source uh, bucket so we choose the scope it's going to apply for all objects and our destination we can select it from the list here so our replication role in the irish region is going to be the destination of our replication we need to select the cafe role and as you can see in the instruction this basically allow us to move all objects from the source bucket to the destination bucket and be careful here because this only apply to any modification we do after the role is active in the source bucket the next thing is going to be safe the rule and if you go back to the instruction now we want us to answer question number three I'm going to go back any question number three do you see the object from your source bucket in the destination bucket you can verify but the answer is going to be no because we have done no modification to the source bucket yet so if you open you can't see any modification so go back to the question answer question three and now go back and we need to make minor changes in the index.html i'm going to go to visual studio and i will make a small uh, paragraph here above the table after replication is 
enabled. Save and then go back to the console to the main web replication to the main uh, bucket. I'm going to upload the index.html file again. Upload. Verify you can see my changes here and you can see these there. Now, once we activate this with the replication, what will happen is the destination bucket of our replication, it will receive the new version of the file index.html. You could also verify this by deleting some files, deleting some images, or adding a new content to your uh, source bucket until you manage to see it in the replication. So you can see now the new content of index.html is here in the replication file. Okay, so let's go back and we need to act, uh, answer question number four, which is, was the version that you just delete from your source bucket also delete from your destination bucket? The answer is yes. Uh, was the version that you just delete from your source bucket also delete from your destination bucket? Yes, because the replication means if we delete this object here in our asset tree bucket, let's try that before we can judge, delete this file. And I'm going to just delete the cafe owner image. Now, if you go back to your ST3, to the replication, refresh, we can't see this image here. What you could do to verify is going to back to the uh, images and upload it again. The image we just delete, which is the cafe owner. I'm going to upload it. To the bucket and you will see that this image now after it will be uploaded it will appear now in the replication so go back oops sorry amazon sc3 go to the replication and this make um, sometimes it take few times to the replication to appear just verify that the website is still active. So this is the image I delete. Be obvious to see it here. And you can see now in the images, I can see the cafe on. So if you want, was the version that you just deleted from your source bucket also delete from your destination bucket? Uh, the answer for this is going to be no and submit. Now, this is basically the lab. Now you can feel free to submit your work and that's all of the challenge lab for creating static website. Thank you very much and see you in the next